And so I'm following the tracks southwards of this young male as we saw them just now and the guys have bumped into him right in front of me. So he's right here at Twin Dams where we were a little bit earlier, which is fantastic news. So luckily we did find these tracks and follow them because nobody had seen them and, and it was lucky that he's now lying somewhere just here so we were slowly but surely kind of following along and uh, had alarm calls of birds and remember i had the alarm calls around twin dams earlier and i was saying i wonder if there's an leopard somewhere here so we are very close to where it is now hopefully i will be able to find him here there we go he's just on this side just gonna try and get round but very fortunate that we came this way. There he is. You can see him just sleeping in the thicket over there. Or oh, I'm not sure who it is, but it's a young male. I'm sure it's the tracks, the same tracks that I was following. So sitting curled up behind, and that's maybe why we didn't spot him from Twin Dams, is because he was just lying there. And that completes our predator trifecta at Juma this morning. So for us here, a cheetah is a very uncommon thing. And so our predators that we generally see would be leopard, lion, and hyenas. And well, we've managed to get them all this after, all this morning. So we've been absolutely spoiled. It's difficult to make out who exactly it is. I, I, my gut feel is it's Tumba, just given the track size, um, as I was talking about earlier and alluding to. So I'm sure it is him, and I'm sure he's just curled up in a way that we can't see. I might be wrong, of course. It's very difficult to make out from that as to who exactly this leopard is, because that leopard is fast, fast, fast asleep and is really not <laughs> with it at all. It's bed weather day, and looks like a fairly sort of rounded tummy so maybe he's had a little bit of food and we know that he did kill an impala but didn't get any of that so maybe he's found something else you can see it's not exactly empty it's not sucked in the way that he's breathing so i'm pretty sure he's got some sort of food item during last night now what i want to try to do is just maybe position in a way that we can see a little bit better the facial area because i want to try and just at least oh there we go oh it's hosanna it's not tumba i apologize so it's little hosanna that we've got here by the way that he just lifted his head and, and his spot pattern that is around the face and just the, the general look it is hosanna so nice to see you hosanna what have you been doing you've been all over the place it seems as his tracks have been walking everywhere at this stage so at least it's good to see him and he's back on juma which is fantastic news and i then think that there might be another leopard here actually because where i was just now the tracks that we had there was one that came south like this and another one that went north and they were slightly different from what i could see i wasn't 100 percent sure of it but i think now that maybe tumba and hosanna are both here and tumba is just north of us and hosanna down this way but either way it doesn't matter it's still fantastic that we've got a leopard to finish off our morning Jared's buddy, you're asking, what do the guides and researchers mean when they talk about 4-3 spots, as you were reading that about Shungile yesterday? Well, it basically it refers to the spot pattern around the whisker line of an animal, and it's a way that we identify these individuals. So when I talk about a whisker pattern, I am going to show you fairly shortly what I mean. I just need to get a photograph of a leopard that I can explain it to you in a better way because where the way that Hosanna is sleeping at the moment is not going to be very easy to print it out at all now I'm gonna try and just quickly get said photo but it's an identifying feature it's a way that we will um, basically uniquely mark a cat because all their spot patterns are different no spot pattern on a leopard is exactly the same and so the researchers use it for that point of view right Senzo so if we have a look here this is a sort of photograph of a, of a leopard and I will show you now what I'm talking about is here on the whisker line, so you see these are the whiskers that are coming down, you see just above there are spots. So one, two, three spots and then on this side one, two, three. Now the numbers refer to those three spots. So this is Kuchava which is a three, three at this stage and so 
well, still will be a 3-3 for the rest of her life. And no leopard will have the exact same grouping of spots. So there might be a number of 3-3 females and number of 3-3 males, but they will all have it slightly differently arranged, and it will have a slight difference. And that's what we use as an ID feature. It's the best way because it's such a unique characteristic, and it's the quickest thing that you can see on a leopard. When it looks up at you and you see those spot patterns around the whisker line, you can already notice, okay, hang on, it's that individual because of that spot pattern. There is other characteristics that you can use to ID things. So researchers and guides will use nicks in the ears. They'll use uh, colors of noses, eye colors, um, certain little markings like Tingana's got a little smiley face on his shoulder. So a number of different ways that we can utilize to be able to then work out who is, it, who is who and make sure we can get the correct identifying features on them. But this leopard is fast, fast, fast asleep and is taking it very easy. Lux, this is the exact spot where the famous leopard standoff was between Hosanna and Tumba. And I have a funny feeling we might not, that might not be the last time we see these two males together. Both of them seem to be loving twin dams at the moment. And until we get proper rain and there's water everywhere, this is where they have to come to find water. And so they are going to bump into each other, I think, a few more times in the next little bit. So hopefully it always ends as amicably as it has in the last few well, in the last instance, and both of them ended up being just fine, and so hopefully it'll be the same again if they do meet up. You can hear the little go-away bird just calling, and I wonder if he might pop his head up at some point if the go-away birds call. It's no wonder we didn't spot him from where we were just now on the dam wall, because, well, the way he's curled up and behind a bush, and it really is impossible probably to see him from that dam wall, so... At least we've come and somebody else bumped into him and, and we would have got him eventually following the tracks. Anyway, we're going to sit with him a little longer, see if he pops his head up for us. And while we do that, let's go across to Jamie and see what she's doing in the Mara.